Section 2. Introducing the best free VST plugins. In this section we will cover how we will define the sound quality of plugins on this course by depth, warmth, character and definition. How to evaluate the overall quality of a plugin by its sound quality, features and interface. How to evaluate the quality of an audio plugin. What is the quality of a plugin? Do all digital plugins sound the same anyway? Does how we interact with a plugin using our computer affect its quality? I would split quality into three main areas. 1. Sound quality. To the inexperienced ear, many plugins that do almost the same thing can all sound the same. Also, if you don't have a professional set of speakers with a quality amp and DAC, you'll be unable to hear the fine details however hard you try. <laughs> Many free plugins actually do sound the same as they use the same code that has been made freely available in textbooks. In particular, many EQ plugins share the exact same code. This does not, however, mean that all plugins sound the same. The plugins on this course have the best sound quality available as judged by general professional consensus and myself. My first and most important criteria is that they don't have any unpleasant artifacts and degrade the audio. If they do have a sound of them, it should be a nice one not the dreaded digital sound of flattening and harshness. Every type of plugin has many different jobs to do, and within these jobs there is often a type of sound that's desirable. For example, if you're compressing drums, you often want them to be punchy. Often a compressor is chosen as it excels in one type of sound. For example, a punchy sound. It might not be so great for smooth vocals. We will go into detail later about what each of these plugins excels at. What is sound quality anyway? We need some kind of working definition as it's such a subjective term. As I mentioned a moment ago, each type of plugin may well be chosen for its particular sound characteristics. Does this mean a very basic VST distortion plugin from 10 years ago that's full of bad sounding artifacts is still high quality in certain situations? Maybe you could argue that, but then we'd end up getting very confused. We need to define high quality so we know what we're aiming for. We are not starting from a blank page. For a generation of sound engineers before us that have all had opinions on what high quality sound is, there does seem to be a pattern in what is regarded as good quality and bad quality. And though some of it is very personal and subjective, some elements I think we can all agree on. Depth. Even in mono, sounds can appear to have a depth to them. By this, I mean they seem to extend further back into the speaker. It is as if they were alive. They have an organic quality to them. Usually a good microphone recording without any processing will automatically have a depth to it, but put extra digital processing on it can quickly kill the depth and give the flat plastic digital sound we're trying to avoid. I believe that depth is a side effect of resolution and minute imperfections and randomness from a natural world. I'm listening to rain outside my window right now and it sounds fantastic. There are a million ways each drop can form and fall onto the various surfaces, creating a universally known pitter-patter sound. Can a computer simulate this? Yes, but it'll never be as good. It would have to be the size of a universe to model every possible aspect. Once the sound data is captured in the computer, everything we do to it takes a step away from a natural world and a step nearer a massively limited computer algorithm. The better the algorithm, the less damage is inflicted on the sound, but damage is always being done. Plugins are bad at adding depth, and very good at taking it away. This is a key element to sound quality. Everyone wants a sound that's alive rather than dead, just as we want to live rather than die ourselves. Quite a heavy explanation, maybe. Warmth. The dreaded marketing phrase. What does it mean? Different things to different people. But in my experience, it often means lacking high end with a bit of a boost around 200 Hz and a little pleasing distortion. This may seem a simple formula, but I refer you back to my definition of depth. Warmth is how we remember old recordings and can't easily be faked. It must also have a depth for it or sound like a cheap plastic imitation. Old recordings lacked high end as they went to tape, which naturally cut off the top end. They also went through many different bits of analog hardware, which all distorted the sound subtly in different ways. Warmth is a shared audio memory of good recordings from a pre-digital past. 